Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, and I'm so glad you could take time to join me for today's little computer adventure. Now, what we're planning on for today is more with the M4 Mac Mini. And I've been waiting on something here that's finally come in. Uh, we're going to try it in, in the setup for the Mac Mini and see if it helps, see if it doesn't. Uh, so I guess we'll have a bit of a review. This is the RayQ uh, USB-C, I believe they call it USB-C hub. Uh, similar to what they have for the, uh, the M1 or M2 Mac minis, where there's a base that goes underneath and basically looks like you've got one uh, consistent uh, item there. Uh, there are, at this point, three distinct versions uh, of this by many, many companies. Uh, all of them made in China, as far as I can tell. Uh, one has caused a problem. One has got actually a raised aluminum lip that the Mac Mini sits on. And that has had a problem of disconnecting the Wi-Fi. Uh, they, they've made some changes in that, so it isn't affecting it as much. And that's led a lot of people to look at the Mac Mini in terms of problems of Wi-Fi, so that's certainly one of the things we're going to check on quite a bit. Uh, in any event, uh, this, this is the RayQ. This is the other one. Uh, the, there are several different makers. Let's do a bit of an unboxing here. Okay. Wrapping off it here, and uh, it just opens right up like that. Now we have a connection diagram to show how to hook it up. Nicely done. Built to chill, uh, which I imagine is that it's supposed to help with the cooling of the Mac Mini. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Let's see what we have here. We have here a USB-A to uh, USB-C cable. We have a very short USB-C to USB-C, it would appear. I don't see any marking on there that would indicate that this is a Thunderbolt cable. But it is as small as it is. The idea is that it would connect from the Mac Mini into one of the three Thunderbolt ports in the back, and it <laughs> you don't have much other options. We have a screw and a little tiny flathead screwdriver. Okay. And now for the hub itself. And here it is. This is where the bottom of the Mac Mini would sit on this. Here on the front of the hub we have uh, two USB-A, which is supposed to be 3.2 ports. Uh, one of them is high-speed charging. Uh, a USB-C out. I believe it is USB-C, not Thunderbolt. Uh, SD card reader and micro SD card reader, which is totally useless to me, but many people like that. And then on the back here, we have uh, two USB-C connections. Uh, I believe this is the one here that is supposed to connect to the computer. There is an HDMI port on there another USB 3.2 headphone jack, and another uh, USB-C uh, output. Uh, so there are two USB-Cs and three USB-As, as well as the HDMI and the headphone jack and the card readers. Okay, now, uh, Interesting. 
somewhere in here there is supposed to be a space to insert an NVMe drive. Now I imagine it's going to have to be here. Now oddly we have a flathead screwdriver and Phillips head screws holding that in. But honestly, I was anticipating that there would be an opening on the back here where you would put your NVMe drive in. Alright, so I'm going to need to take a look at this and see exactly where you put that in. Of course, there is uh, the user manual, which will, I'm sure, tell me that. I hadn't seen it because we just opened this. So I'm going to take a look at this, and we'll be back to give you a little bit better idea of what's going on with this. So please, stay tuned. All right, it was pretty much as I had expected. Uh, those screws take off the plate, which is basically on the top where the Mac Mini goes in, uh, which might have some concern. Uh, the 4 terabyte SSD that I'm using has been put in there. It was a pain. Yeah, they provide you with a screw, but there's a screw in there already. All right. Uh, it, it was a real pain to get it to go back in. The screwdriver that they provided uh, is not magnetized, and I've got tons of magnetized Phillips and, and hex uh, screwdrivers. I don't have a flathead that's magnetized. Well, anyway, I managed to get it in there, and we would then... Put this back on, attach the screws, and then proceed to hook up the uh, the entire unit. Uh, you don't need to watch me put those screws in there, uh, so please stay tuned. All right, I've taken advantage of the new uh, configuration here to uh, hopefully clean up a little bit on the setup that I've got. Uh, this is intended as a keyboard tray, and of course we do have the keyboard and the Bluetooth mouse. Uh, that was a set that was featured, uh, it's an Artec set, it was in last week's video. Uh, here we have the OWC Thunderbolt 4 dock uh, on the front here, very easy to see. I have connected a USB 2 hub to the USB 2 port that's on the front. Uh, and I've connected both of the USB pass uh, throughs from the two Apple Cinema Display HDs uh, to that. So we have use of that. Uh, and we do have several items plugged into there. We also, of course, have the USB, uh, excuse me, not the Thunderbolt uh, connection to the Mac Mini right there. Uh, fortunately, I have a somewhat longer Thunderbolt 4 cord, and it seems to be working fine. The main monitor is also plugged in to this hub, uh, excuse me, to this dock. Uh, the secondary monitor is plugged into the USB port on the Mini itself. All right, we have the SATA 2.5-inch uh, SSD enclosure here connected to one of the USB 3.2 ports on the dock and the older USB 3 spinning hard drive uh, which is being used as the time machine drive. Okay, so let's look up a little higher here and we see the top of the desk has been very clean. We have the mini itself of course there and underneath it is the uh, the RayQ hub. Right at this point, there's not much plugged into the Ray the, the RayQ hub. I've got, uh, of course, the Mac Mini plugged with its pass through into there, uh, and that's about it. Of course, the RayQ does in fact have. Uh, a four terabyte NVMe SSD in there, which is providing uh, 
yet more additional storage. Uh, over there underneath secondary display, you can see uh, the Thunderbolt 4 uh, OWC enclosure. That is plugged, of course, directly into the Mac Mini and providing very fast external storage. Uh, and I would be somewhat remiss if I didn't point out the retro aspect of this. Uh, the displays here, the main display is, of course, the 30-inch uh, Apple Cinema HD display. Uh, venerable display, but looking absolutely gorgeous. That is plugged into the OWC dock. And then the 23-inch uh, Apple Cinema HD display, uh, which is plugged into the HDMI port of the Mac Mini itself. Uh, you might remember uh, a video I did a while back here where this display was not working. Uh, I did troubleshoot that and discovered the problem actually was the power supply uh, having died. And I did discover if you have a similar problem, uh, it is not difficult at all to source replacement power supplies. Uh, there are a ton of them available on eBay, should you be in that situation. All right, uh, so next up, we're going to take a bit of a look at how the computer is displaying. So let me reconfigure so we can get into that. Stay tuned. Okay, we'll do a, a few quick things to sum up here. First of all, the concern about Wi-Fi speeds. Here's in a speed test. This is maybe 20 megabits per second slower uh, than on, on the download than uh, we had seen uh, before the the hub was connected. Uh, the upload is a little bit more noticeable, about 13. However, the, the thing with this kind of speed test, uh, internet speeds vary so much. There are so many variables outside of anyone's control that it can be hard to tell. Uh, generally speaking, that particularly most of the time you're, you're looking at the download speeds, um, you know, streaming video or whatever you're doing, and this is quite good. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, upload speeds, that would bother me because I am pretty often uploading rather sizable video files to YouTube, but here we are. Okay, very good. Now, the external storage options. We've got our 256 uh, gigabyte SSD, of course. All of these are four terabyte options. Uh, the one here with the Thunderbolt logo obviously is Thunderbolt 4. Uh, this is the NVMe SSD that is attached in the RayQ uh, hub. And then the Orico uh, 3.2, that's a 2.5-inch uh, SATA SSD connected in a 3.2 USB enclosure. Uh, these, these are the three primary ways that you would add external storage. Uh, a review of that we'll find in a future video. Let's... There's one thing I, I do want to check here. If we can go to Black Magic, I'm curious to see what kind of speeds we get from this 11 NVMe SSD that's in the uh, the RayQ hub. All right. Oh wow. Close up under a thousand and right. Read is less. Let's let it run one more. 
and even a little higher on the right. <laughs> this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. Uh, I, I find that pretty impressive. Now, I should point out, there's nothing... Uh, let me stop this now. Uh, there's nothing much uh, connected other than that one drive. Uh, this, the RayQ hub is connected via Thunderbolt to the Mac Mini. Uh, and there are lots of other uh, ports on there, none of which are being used. So the only thing being used is that uh, NVMe SSD. But honestly, that's pretty darn good. So I, I can see two takeaways from this. One, uh, the wireless speeds are not seriously affected at all. That's good. And, you know, if you find it's affected and you need to try to bump it up a little bit, you can pick up the Mac Mini and take it off uh, the hub. Uh, but it's it seems fine. And the speeds of the NVMe SSD in that enclosure that's internal to the hub aren't bad at all. So anyhow, uh, this is an intriguing option. I did find, just before making this video, uh, Sateki has come out with uh, a different version. It's similar to this, but not exactly the same. One big difference is they have a cutout so that you can reach the power button on the Mac Mini more easily. Uh, honestly, of course, I had to shut the Mini down when I was reconfiguring this. All I had to do was lift it up a little bit from the from the hub, press it, and hey, it's not a big deal. All right. So, be good to other people. They need it and deserve it. Be good to yourselves. We can make this world a better place. It isn't yet. So please, start out by being good to yourself, and we shall work on it. Um, yes, it's not a better place. So please, take very, very good and careful care in these difficult times. Um, all right, where are we going from here? The next video that I am thinking about is a comparison of these three versions of external storage. We've got the Thunderbolt, uh, where I have four terabytes. We have the NVMe uh, in the enclosure there, uh, which is another four terabytes. We have the 2.5 inch Orico SATA SSD uh, in an enclosure. Uh, these are the three ways that you're likely to be able to add external storage. So I think we'll look at a, a bit of a comparison of these three in the next video. And I have an interesting one coming up. There are, from what I have seen so far, two different options for uh, replacing the internal storage at much, much less than what Apple charges. Uh, I have ordered one. It'll take a while to come in. It's coming from China. But when it does, we'll have a shot at replacing that 256 gigabyte SSD with a two terabyte. Well, in any event, until those things are up and available on the channel, this has been Broke Electronics.